Pop quiz, I'm gonna throw nine questions at you and you don't have to write down any of your answers. Just take note of what you think is right, okay? Here we go. How many of the world's one-year-old children today have been vaccinated against some disease? Is the answer 20%, 50%, or 80%? Worldwide, 30-year-old men have spent 10 years in school on average. How many years have women of the same age spent in school? Is the answer nine years, six years, or three years? Question number three. In 1996, tigers, giant pandas, and black rhinos were all listed as endangered. How many of these three species are more critically endangered today than they were back then? Is it two of them, one of them, or none of them? Next question is how many people in the world have some access to electricity? Is it 20%, 50%, or 80%? Next one. How did the number of deaths per year from natural disasters change over the last 100 years? They've more than doubled, have they remained about the same, or have they decreased by less than half? What is the life expectancy in the world today? Is it 50 years, 60 years, 70 years? In the last 20 years, the proportion of the world's population living in extreme poverty has either almost doubled, remained more or less the same, or has almost halved. In all low-income countries around the world, how many girls finish primary school? Is it 20%, 40%, or 60%? Where does the majority of the world population live? Low-income countries, middle-income countries, or is it high-income countries? It's not high-income countries. Okay, that's it. I'll give you the answers in just a couple of minutes. Hi, I'm Tyus, and I make videos and podcasts on personal development. And in this video, let's you and I talk about fear, where it comes from, what we share about it, how it helps us, and how to overcome it, I guess, most importantly. I'm doing this video because my friend Vinny wrote a book all about fear and offered to let us face our fears at his home. We ate fire, and he convinced me to walk on broken glass. There's going to be a lot more on that in just a second. But first, why do we have fear? Fear is a good thing. If you look at anyone that has achieved anything of significance, fear has been a piece of that puzzle to, to achieve that. Not everybody needs to achieve amazing and incredible things, but for the people that have that desire and, and want to do that, you are going to have to face fear and you're going to have to use it as a way to uh, motivate yourself and, and really get you to that point as opposed to it being a roadblock. Fear is there to signal danger. It lets us know when there's a threat and it's telling us we need to get ready to deal with whatever danger is coming our way. According to Dr. Carl Albertchett, we all have the same fears when they're all boiled down into the basic form. There's humiliation, which includes things like being shamed or feeling worthless. There's the fear of separation and that covers abandonment or rejection. Uh, the third category is that of loss of autonomy, which means that you lose freedom or the ability to do something. Then there is mutilation, like the fear of getting hurt from, let's say, walking on glass. Yes, I did it, and I was unharmed, but please do not try this at home without trained experts around you to make sure you're gonna be safe. And finally, the last category of fear is the fear of death. According to a Chapman University survey on American fears, the number one fear is public speaking, followed by heights, creepy crawlies, and drowning. This means that people would rather die than speak in public. That seems to make it obvious that not all fears are rational. If some of my fears are not rational, then I might as well get over them. I'd go one step further and argue that beyond fears being irrational, they're often used to control you. The nightly news is constantly showing how bad the world is. Politicians routinely point out all the problems that we face, but maybe they're just using fear to manipulate us. Maybe things aren't that bad. In Steven Pinkert's book, Enlightenment Now, he shows definitively that we're living in the best time ever to be alive. He points out the fact and proves the point that we have less prejudice, we're smarter, we're living longer, we're safer, we're freer, we're richer, and that the environment's improving. Let's look back at that quiz I gave you in the beginning of the video. Here are the answers. So how many of the world's one-year-old children today have been vaccinated against some disease? Well, the answer was 80%, the highest possible answer on that. Worldwide, 30-year-old men have spent 10 years in school. On average, how many years have women of the same age spent in school? Well, the answers were nine years, six years, or three years. If you guessed nine years, you would have gotten the answer right. So another great positive result. In 1996, tigers, giant pandas, and black rhinos were all listed as endangered. How many of those three species are more critically endangered today? The possible answers were two of them, one of them, or none of them. None of them are endangered as critically as they were back then. 
How many people in the world have some access to electricity? Is it 20%, 50%, or 80%? Well, the answer is 80%. The vast majority of the world has electricity. How did the number of deaths per year from natural disasters change over the last 100 years? Did they more than double? Did they remain about the same? Well, no, they decreased to less than half. What is the life expectancy in the world today? Is it 50 years, 60 years, or 70 years? The answer is it's 70, and it's continuing to climb. In the last 20 years, the proportion of the world's population living in extreme poverty has almost doubled, remained more or less the same, or has almost halved. Well, it's almost halved. How about this question? In all low-income countries across the world today, how many girls finish primary school? Is the answer 20%, 40%, or 60%? It is 60%. Where does the majority of the world's population live? Low income countries, middle income countries, or high income countries? Well, if you didn't say high income countries, you guessed right, of course it's not. But it's not low income countries either, it's middle income countries. Most people answer these questions with a bias that things are much worse than how they really are. These questions came from the Gapminder test, which you can find at gapminder.com. So here's what we know. We know that we all share the same kinds of fears. Some of our fears are irrational and our fears are often used to manipulate us. So how do we fight back? The first step is to get away from whatever is making us fearful. Studies have shown that our judgment is basically impaired when we're in a state of heightened emotion. So by taking ourselves out of those situations, we can reduce that emotion and that helps us respond to fear in a more logical frame of mind. The second step is to identify if the fear is justified or if it's not. This can be broken down into two basic categories. Is it true? And is it something that you can control? Fearing a monster under the bed is not something that is true, so it is not worth fearing. And fearing something that we can't control, such as the death of a loved one, is just something we can't have any control over. So why put our energy into it? It's better just to let it go. But if the fear is real and within our control, then it's worth investigating. The next step is to learn more about the topic you're afraid of. So let's say you're afraid of spiders. The third most common fear in America is the fear of spiders, and it's capitalized in movies like Itsy Bitsy and Arachnophobia. With a little research, you'll find that there are over 45,000 types of spiders, and some experts say that that is actually about 100,000 different varieties of spiders. If you live in the United States, though, only two or three types have venom that could kill a person you are two and a half times more likely to be killed by a cow than you are by a spider in the United States. So once you've learned about the fear, you'll have a better understanding of which spiders you should probably avoid. But the knowledge often won't be enough to overcome the emotion. So this is the hard part. You must face your fear, not once, over and over and over again. Pick up that spider. Go skydiving, uh, approach the person you like and strike up a conversation and then repeat it until your emotions are no longer in the way, that your emotions don't act and respond like there's a threat because it knows that there's not a threat. It knows that you're safe. A couple of days ago, a friend of mine told me about this little personal challenge that she's undertaking. It's called 75 Hard. It's 75 days of maintaining a perfect diet, drinking a gallon of water, working out twice a day, reading, and taking a progress picture. And when she mentioned it, I was thinking how much I don't want to do it because, well, I'm afraid of something like that. So, well, I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm going to face my fears, and I'm starting that program tomorrow. I'll let you know how it turns out. So if you're enjoying these videos, I hope you subscribe. I hope you hit the like button uh, and please support my channel. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, this is a new venture for me, so I'm, I'm brand new to YouTube. You'll notice there's only a few videos there. So any support you have, I'd really appreciate it. And I really wanna know what your biggest fear is. You can answer that below by just leaving me a comment. I'll see you next time.